Welcome back. This time, I am building a custom made box for a musician. All his guitar pedals will be kept in place as he travels from gig to gig, and the entire structure will be done up with a magnetic lid. This is just another one of my creative projects showcasing material fusion, which in this case, utilizing aluminum extrusion, acrylic panels, 3D printed parts, and various off-the-shelf accessories. And once again, I will show you how it's built. Materials were ordered pre-cut, and semi-pre-drilled, because I would like to demonstrate several different drilling jigs in this project. Black and silver colored extrusions were chosen, and the ends were already tapped at the factory. These drilled holes were accurately prepared in advance, for the purpose of joinery strength. And as you watch on, you will be able to imagine the amount of planning that went into this project. For maximum rigidity, and yet attempting to conceal as much joinery as possible, I have always resorted to having screws and bolts done internally. The efforts into preparation is considered extremely tedious, but the end result will always be rewarding. To achieve a complete flush joint, 3D printed flush plates were used to keep the extrusions in place while tightening down. And when placed on a flat table, this simple method will get us a perfect corner. And when we are unable to tighten the bolt using the short end of the Allen key, we can use another piece of extrusion this way to add additional length to the end. Right now, the 3D printed drill guide is being prepared. I have hence switched to another type of drill guide, and these are the additional components that came with it, but I do not need. What I want, are these bushings that come in different sizes for drilling. And over time, I have created so many useful jigs around them, and here, you will see the first two jigs I made. With these drilling jigs, I have been able to drill extrusions more precisely and neatly, even better than the factory. And this is how we use them. I have created many types of drill jigs before, and based on my experience, these jigs that you see are currently the most practical and reliable. These metal guides must be able to fit exactly into the printed part. If it is a little tighter, it will be difficult to remove the guides during interchange. And if it is any looser, the guide will move and rotate out during drilling. I can no longer explain how much time I spent on testing the whole size tolerance. This hole is perfectly done, ready to accept an internal joinery. And to utilize flush plates for perfect joints, we will need to tap the extrusion ends. This center of this drilled hole is done 5 mm away from the edge, and these type of jobs will be rejected by the factory, citing the drilling blowout will damage the hole. I have since drilled them myself with my own jig so many times that I lost count, and every single one came out good. And over here, I am demonstrating how to make an absolutely accurate corner, completely flushed and square. 
Using a dual flush plate method, both edges will be kept on the same plane. How exactly straight the perpendicular extrusion is, will now be at the mercy of the factory cut. If their machine calibration isn't great, we will get a squareness issue, therefore additional measures were taken, to keep 90 degrees in check. And with these brackets, the joints are now stronger. In fact, these joints at the back has to be terribly strong, to take the weight of the lid lifting and closing. This particular 3D printed part has to fit through the acrylic back panel, and also hold his logo plate at the same time. I made the design as such, that it generates additional rigidity to the back of the structure by the extreme tight fit, through the acrylic panel. And the only way to assemble this piece accurately in position, is to put on the acrylic panel first. It took me quite a while to design this setup, and it took me way longer to secure this part into the correct position due to the utter precision that is required. Here is the custom cut acrylic panel. It has to go on first for alignment. Only after we found the final position of the 3D printed part, we can then lock it down in place. This design will create a recessed spot for his logo to mount into, which will be 3D printed at the end of the project. I will show you how I made the logo nearing the end of the video. And after securing it tightly down, the middle bone can now be fully flushed and tightened down, and also reinforced with brackets. To make it whatever she put her mind to Late night hours up the hill Serving coffee to strangers Talking about revenue She kept dreaming of a world Big enough for everyone But she knew it must rain before it grows Throughout the design phase, I made it a point to close up any exposed extrusion ends aesthetically, creating a whole lot of additional work, just for beauty. But this has already become the aluminum carpenter way, and you can find it in almost all my videos. Now, we are assembling the lids. There is a necessary 1mm tolerance gap that I wish to add in between both lids, and I happen to have this ruler to use as a spacer. The gap is required by the chosen hinges that you will see later. These are acrylic side panels that will cover up all the exposed aluminum extrusion on all sides. The customer specifically wanted dark and translucent panels, and exposed screw heads that look exactly like one of my 3D printers. Therefore, I had to plan holes and hole sizes, to utilize the slots and the ends of the extrusion for fastening solutions. This is the acrylic panel for one of the lids. 
Each panel has been precisely laser cut, exactly to my 3D model. And it is so precise, that it takes a while to fit onto the frame. For the magnetic version of these lids, a lot of experimentation was done. Firstly, the magnet must fit tightly into the printed parts, and, the correct number of magnets must be decided, to get the required magnetic resistance. Throughout assembly, this method was used to keep track of the magnet polarity. And a whole lot of grub screws were inserted, firstly, to keep things in place, and secondly, simply for aesthetics. I designed the part with absolutely no tolerance gaps, and as you can see, it has been a little too precise. Next up, this drill guide is made specifically to make a hole through, with the center of the hole 5mm away from the edge. I need it this way, in order to use aluminum end caps on all the corners of the structure. Honestly, I have never seen anybody drill so close to the edge. But anyway, this method works well, clearly for the way I design my models. And right now, I will show you the process to make a completed three-way corner, made possible only by this drilling jig, and completed with an aluminum end cap. And for that, we have to start by flushing the bottom corner first. This three-way corner is now complete, square and flushed, and the industrial-looking exposed end of the extrusion is covered up. We can now head on to the panels. These flush plates are being inserted now, to hold the acrylic panel in place, just in case my table is not flat, or in any sort twisted. Multiple screws and hammerhead T-nuts will hold the acrylic panels onto the frame. I have learnt from past projects, that these holes must be done larger, for play and tolerance reasons. And once the assembly is ready, all we need to do, is to rattle it into position. In this position, handles will be installed. The handle has to be secured directly to the frame, and it should not place any stress onto the panels. Even the type of joinery to choose must be thought through carefully, because the final product has to house an extremely heavy setup. Hammerhead T-nuts are very easy to install, but they do have a disadvantage. Under different circumstances, they either turn or do not turn and rotate within. 
That is why I have a torch with me to see through the acrylic panel, to ensure that they rotate and lock in place. Now it is time to assemble the front lid. It has to be done very differently from the other lid, and you will see why. Magnets will also be secured to the sides of the lid, and these will directly meet on top of the magnets on the bottom frame. At this point of time during the assembly, I still do not know if this setup will work. Everything so far was based on design, theory, and experience. Thankfully, the calculations were correct. The number of magnets used were exactly enough. At this position, I will need to place the vertical piece 21 mm away from the edge. This 1 mm is an intentional gap between moving parts to prevent rubbing. And this is my method to gain precision in such scenarios, and in this case, I use the ruler as the spacer again. These hinges are super hard to find. I have been researching hinges of specific kinds, suitable for my various projects, and I have been at it for a couple years already. And now, since I found such high quality hinges, I can now bring so many of my other concepts to reality. All the hinges are fully installed, and we shall test the mechanism before moving on. And I am glad to report, it works perfect, and we shall head on to complete the front panel. This 3D printed part will hold my logo plate. The design is slightly different from the, the other logo plate, but it works the same. This has to be installed first before the last acrylic panel can go on.
Cause I'm doing better, life cannot be more golden But honestly I won't lie, sometimes I ask why I can't get you out my head, now I don't forget that I To keep the lids open, I have a pair of these gas struts to install. There was quite a bit of calibration behind the scenes to get to the sweet spot, where the lids will stay shut, working in tandem with the magnets. Now that all the pressing issues have been eliminated, we can use slot covers to conceal all the unused slots in the extrusion. On every of my projects, slot covers were used extensively to derive a silver and black colored look. Through this, I managed to achieve some aesthetic value while trying to hide the drilled holes and slots. And after so many projects, people started recognizing my builds just by that alone. These casters were chosen for this project, and multiple reasons went into it. These beefy casters will be able to hold the weight, and yet tall enough for any possible cable solutions to go under it, giving it a good clearance height. And after these were done, 3D printing the logo is up next. Now that everything's done, I took a good last look around to ensure I didn't leave out anything I wanted to do. This project has been massively heavy on small details and it is easy to overlook some things.
optional. And after the last bit of touch up works, we are ready to integrate the guitar pedals into the box. Thanks to multiple measurements beforehand, we had a perfect fit, exactly the way it was planned out to be. The pedals were simply held down by large cable ties, going through drilled holes in the extrusions. To use all the pedals, he can just keep the lids wide open. Otherwise, the pedals that he most frequently uses were already arranged to the front, and having the lid half open will allow him to just access those pedals. And once the lid is closed, the magnets will hold and keep everything shut. And here are some of the post-assembly photoshoot results for your pleasure.